Okay, this is the gas meter as it enters the structure. And you have valves like this. This is in the on position when it's parallel. And if it's perpendicular, that's off. That's how you turn the gas off to the house. Should you need to do that. But this is the secondary drain line for one of the air conditioning systems. And it's supposed to discharge over an obvious location such as a window. This window has been boarded up. So it's no longer an obvious location. Well, we came to talk about the electric service panels. We're going to ramble a little bit, just like we talked about the gas over here. Just like we talked about that. We're also going to talk about the water heater. But for now, this is the main electric service panel. Power comes in above grade. For the most part, we've got a decent drip loop until you get to the weather mast, to the weather head up there. Up there from Hillbilly Home Inspections, and the water just kind of rolls off into the electrical system. This is the meter box, and this is the main service panel, load center, call it what you will. Three sides should be sealed, the tops and the sides. Three sides should have been sealed. We've got one ground. One ground coming from this. One ground coming from this. By today's standards, that would be two. It's 200 amps. We got AFCI in the bedrooms. When this panel was installed, that was probably all that was required. If it was by today's standards, it'd be differently. The panel is really not labeled right. We do not have duplication, and we've got handwriting, not printing. The bonding location is supposed to be labeled inside of this panel so the electrician know where to go find the, the main bond and it's just not there. It's not there. So what else have we got in here? Well, again, by today's standards, but it's a safety issue, so we're gonna deal with it. There should be plastic, rubber, plastic protective covers over L1 and L2. And this is the main, this 2-0 cable coming in here. This is, this is the main neutral and it's supposed to be wrapped no fewer than three times with white tape. And it's not. Coming along in here, Okay, this is the, and it could be mixed in this panel, not the next one, but for lack of a better description, this is the neutral bus, and they're bonded as they should be, but this is the neutral bus, and you can double grounds, you can double grounds, but, and I can't say you can't because they did, but you shouldn't double neutrals, like that one right there, that's a, that's a double neutral right in there. And then, what else? That's about all I can think of. We got double neutrals. The main neutral is not wrapped. We're gonna have plastic covers. Oh, and uh, right here, that white hot. If you're in this box and you don't know that's hot, you don't belong in this cabinet. I get that. But that that white wire, white, <laughs> that white wire right there should have been wrapped with black tape. That's, that's the way it works. There's the grounding rod. It's supposed to be completely buried, and it's not. There's single grounding rod. We'll just move on along here. Listen to some music. Enjoy the tunes. Flagstone laid out like this is beyond the scope of the inspection. It's not dimensionally uniform, and it might be a trip hazard for Granny. So you might want to grab the old, grab the woman's arm and help her along to the um, play center, the backyard play center. This is, a, this is an oriented strand board, OSB, on an exterior wall application. They painted it, I get that. They painted it, but that's an unconventional application. And while we're talking about electrical, these novelty lights right here, uh, you shouldn't use an extension cord in a permanent application. So, everybody does it. There's, there's your there's another load center huh so that's kind of messed up this is the water heater i don't know how many water heaters we have but here's one it's 50 gallons and it has a circulating pump now back in the day these screens a flashlight hang on bear with me Back in the days, these events were supposed to have screens on them. Today, they would be open. So it's open today, and uh, that no longer meets current requirements. This 
glue does not have a thimble on it and flues are supposed to fit together. They're supposed to get along. They're not supposed to be taped up. Tape's wrong. Wrong tape, wrong tape. Again, the circulating pump. This is your temperature pressure relief valve. Okay, It should be insulated, just like these water supply lines should be insulated. They insulated some of it, I get it, but next to the tank, this should all be insulated. Insulated, insulated. Not only should this be insulated, but it goes nowhere. 200 pounds per square inch of 200 degree steam shooting out here onto your bug spray can. This says it was installed in 2014, and if that turns out to, you know, I'm going to read the main, it's a Bradford White, so I have to get a key to ascertain the age of manufacture. It's 50 gallons. We do not have an expansion tank. Uh, one's not required. You have less than 80 PSI to the house, so one's not required. Uh, electronic ignition. Um, you have to go up in here. It's kind of difficult. Kind of difficult to get to the. Kind of, kind of difficult to get to the shutoff valve. Just saying. And you should have a sediment trap to catch the impurities before they go into it. And then here's a safety pan. You got a safety pan. You got a 50 gallon water heater tank. You think that, um, you know, what are the odds of that pan holding 50 gallons? I don't think that it's very good. So it's going to come out and it's going to affect your drywall, maybe migrate into the house. It's not going to come up over this curb. So the safety pan doesn't have a drain line. The TMP doesn't have a drain line. We do not have a carrying use manual. We do not have a sediment trap. The gas shutoff is difficult. We do not have a a temperature pressure relief drain line. You know, the um, TMP is not insulated. The water supply lines are insulated. The flue pipe is not supposed to be taped up. We do not have a thimble on the screen. Shouldn't have a screen on that. So that's that's the water heater story. Some of these panels I've been noticing. They, everywhere I've been, everywhere you have these, the, you know, they move under my feet. They move under my feet. And they'll they'll continue to move. They'll continue to move. They just got started. They just got started. A tree shouldn't be closer than 25 feet to the structure. I'll get that. We're moving on along. A lot of this will be redundant. Sorry. It's just the dynamics of the house. I'm trying to consolidate some things. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, how you doing? Where you going, buddy? There you go. There's your skeeter eater. Coming on along. We have two garage overhead doors. Metal panel doors. See this one here? It's got a manual door lock on it. See that? You're not supposed to be able to do that. I'll show you in a minute. This one's got a manual door lock on him, and you're not supposed to be able to do that. Oh, he's not in there. But you shouldn't be able to do that. Optic sensors are higher from the ground than six inches. We do not have spring tension warning notices on each corner of the first panel. First is shingles, bricks, whatever you talk about, first course. First, second, third, fourth. You always start at the bottom on the shingles, on the bricks, on these overhead door panels. So the first panel should have on each corner, it should have a spring tension notice. Somewhere on this door, it should have a child safety notice. Child safety notice should be on this door. And there should be a handle inside the door so that you can pull pull it up if you had to disengage it. Because you had an emergency or something, you want to get in and out, need to get in and out. Maybe because your optic sensor is too high, you're squashing the cat. And you need to pull that and pull it off of them. I don't know what's happening. Okay. These, I'm vertically challenged. I'm not real tall. These buttons, I'll measure them, but I don't think they're five feet from the ground. They're supposed to be a minimum of five feet between the door threshold, garage floor, and height. So that little hands can't get up here and get to them. Let's see. That's it. They're not labeled either. At least it's intuitive. Okay. Remember I was talking about this door lock? What would happen if it was locked and you opened the door? Ah, oh, the courtesy light's working. Remember when I was talking about that? Well, maybe if it wasn't locked, this door wouldn't have been buckled like this. You see that? Not, not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. All right, so we'll see if he opens, just so we see if the courtesy light comes on. Courtesy lights are on. Emergency pull handles are present. 
Now these doors, oh, that's GFCI protected. That's pretty awesome. Are you GFCI protected too? You sure, you sure are. See that little blue sticker right there? It says that he's GFCI protected, probably tied to this one. Anytime you have a circuit that's GFCI protected but it doesn't have the device, like that one does, then you're supposed to have those ugly little blue stickers. Sometimes they're black, sometimes they're yellow, sometimes they're red. I'm not sure what this plumbing pipe is. We're about to find out. I'm not sure what this plumbing pipe is. It comes out of the house, wrapped up with, <laughs> wrapped up with duct tape. Comes over here and discharges in the ground right next to the house. Right next to the house. Look at that. Moss in there. Okay, we got two condensing units. This is your your sub panel. Should not be located behind the condensing unit. You're supposed to have 36 inches of clearance around this thing. You just are. What else we got in here? See that green screw? See those two screws right there? These are bonded. This is your neutral. This is your ground. And they're bonded. Supposed to be bonded in the main panel. Not supposed to be bonded in the sub panel. That old bar should be taken off. There's other ways to do it. But just saying. So, what's going on here? It's not properly labeled. That's called handwriting. That's called printing. And I have any duplication. Not enough information going on here. It should be sealed on three sides. So that's what we got. Okay, behind the condensing unit. These are your electric service disconnect. This is a electric service disconnect for this unit. This one is for this unit. This is 25 amps. Let's look. 25 amps. What are we supposed to have here? 25 amps. It's properly fused. Check it out. Check it out. This is the disconnect for him. That power probably goes to the main. We'll have to look for that. And this guy's just a dead man. He's just sitting there. He's not doing anything. What are you doing today, sir? I'm not doing nothing. Okay. It's supposed to seal it on three sides. So this unit right here, R410, is what it's supposed to be. All right. It's about eight years old. So it's probably R14, uh, excuse me, Sear 14. These are called Schrader valves. Look that up in the dictionary. But they're refrigerant service ports, so where 90% of your leaks are, and you're missing your caps. And since this is 410, you should also have anti theft Schrader valve caps on there as well. So, anyway, you're missing your caps. This foam was okay, get Darren back in here in the day, but see that? See, it's, there, there's new foam that they use. It's, it's, thicker, protects it from the sun's UV rays, because you don't want it doing this. Give it a couple more years, give it a couple more years, it's going to look like that. That's why they don't do it. And we don't have anti theft Schrader valves on this guy either. But he's got some other... Hey, I'm dropping all my stuff. Nothing foolish than an old man with stuff flying out of his pockets. That's pretty foolish. See how this pad holds up real nice? See how this one's so close to the ground? It's supposed to be three inches off the ground. See how that one, he's almost no, you know, you can say he's level. This guy, he's, he's no, yeah, you can't say that about him. He's not level. But what I'm really talking about here is he's 2004, he's 17 years old. They're engineered on paper to last 20 years. They may last 35, but Las Vegas, Las Vegas is going to give you 14. After 14 years, this thing's done just about everything you would imagine you would expect it to do. R22. No longer manufactured in the United States. No longer produced in the United States. Yes, they do have a stockpile of it. And yes, it's very expensive. They have drop-in alternatives. This is already... I mean, this guy's 17 years old. What is he going to be? He's going to be a 13 sear, maybe a 12 sear. So with uh, the drop-ins, the alternative refrigerants, 
Okay, they're between 10 and 30 percent less effective, e efficient. So you'd be getting something less efficient and putting it in an old service. And once a technician, another technician comes in, he's, he's going to see that somebody was in here jacking with it and putting all that goofball refrigerant in there, and he's not going to want to touch it. You might as well marry the guy that, that did that. But really, most any technician that comes out here to service this is going to encourage you, rightfully so, to update it. It's time. It's time. It's got an obsolete refrigerant system inside of it.